Well, I am still on this makeup marathon, and we have now moved to the eyes. So, this is probably one of my favorite things about makeup is eye makeup. I love eyeshadow palettes. I have an inordinate amount of them. It's like sick how many I have. And even the ones from thousand years ago, I haven't thrown away, and that's not really safe. You shouldn't be using them. And really, the older ones I don't use, I just look at them because they're pretty. But I'm also always trying new ones for lots of reasons. Obviously, one of them is I have a makeup channel. I do report new ones to you. That's my excuse. And some of the ones that I really got involved in in the first place were my, um, what, what really got me into YouTube, period, which was Makeup by Tiffany D. I love her. She has the prettiest eyes I've ever seen on the planet. And um, if you don't subscribe to her, you should. You will really enjoy her videos. She's now more, you know, she's gotten married. She has a baby. So her, she's a little more diverse in what she does. But she still does hauls. I think she still does makeup videos. But she started out doing eye makeup. And I absolutely loved her smoky eye video. I think it's one of the biggest ones out there. And she should be as big as some of these other people are. I don't know if she didn't have the... Um, I don't know if it's money people put into the videos or or because uh, her her video editing's excellent. She's always been great, and I'll never forget um, one of the ones that she did um, was a smoky eye, and she must have used 15 different colors, but she did it so well. She's a professional makeup artist, and it was just so fun to watch her. But I remember when she would say, "I like this," people would go buy it. She was one of the first people to cause that reaction. That and Ellen Blair Fowler. Um, and then there's some other ones like Fleur, uh, DeForce, and um, some others. But I remember one of the first palettes that I bought just because she said she loved it was this one. And this is a MAC palette, and it was called Bare My Soul. And it's one of their eye, uh, quads, and they would always come out with different themes and colors. And and because, no kidding, the, the YouTube makeup gals were causing people to go to the stores and buy things or sell out online, they would, they would cause these people's business to grow beyond what it ever was. Even in grocery stores and drug stores, you used to see a few products. Now you see whole aisles, sometimes two or three aisles of nothing but makeup. That's because of YouTube and people being encouraged, both in skincare and makeup. Anyway, this is one of my, my first palettes. I'll just use this today, but um, I also love Chanel palettes. Uh, I love their quads, and this is one of my favorites. I feel like this is the one I want to use today. And this one is uh, number 226, Tisse Rivoli. And it's just beautiful, beautiful brown tones. They're almost brown grays, and that is my tones. But I do really like this one. I should do a makeup um, tutorial with this. I probably did one years ago, but, I mean, this is old, y'all. But I feel like it's fine. But there's not, like, a white shimmer highlighter on this, so I would probably kind of use this and that together or something else. But I love the brown and the green in this one. And I love the use of gold. I think you would just have to be careful how you went about it. But I do love that. That's kind of where I got started with it all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just start, again, my brushes that I really highly recommend are the Sigma brushes. Um, I don't think there's any better out there. I really don't. That's my personal opinion. I know some people would argue Mor Morphe. Mm, not really, but excuse me, I had a little burp. I can't see that far away. There's one. Okay, this is the medium angled uh, shading brush. Um, with Sigma, by the way, if there's an E in front, it's for eye. If, it, if there's an F in front, there's for face. So this is an E70, it's an angled brush. And that's what I always use for highlighter. Some people use it for the transition color. So I'm gonna just load this up with the highlight. And I, I love a palette that has a mirror because then you can use it and not have to use another mirror. Just go right under the brow, one good swoop, and then back and forth. The reason I go back and forth and kind of push in is it gets the color in the pore. And that's just a very soft highlighter. And then I'm going to also do the inner corner and across the lid, right by the nose bone and right on the edge, right before the crow's feet. Because then you have a, something to blend into, and I think that's kind of better than just having nothing there. Really getting those pores good. Again, this is a very subtle highlight. It's not super white. And then I'm going to do the inner corner here. We already did a highlighter in the inner corner over the lid, right by the nose bone, and right at the end where the where the brow stops, right there. But before the crow's feet, you don't want to highlight the crow's feet. Okay, and then y'all know my favorite eye brush 
is the um, the F50, and it's just because it's a nice wide brush to use for your transition color. And for me, the transition color really should be a matte one. This does not have matte, I just noticed. So I'm going to use this kind of medium color in here. Maybe I'll blend it a little with that color. And I'm not really sure what this is. I think I picked up the wrong palette, but I'm loving it. This is a brown-gray type palette, and I do like that. Just to get the transition color between the brow and the crease, you just want to have something that as you blend along will work. And that will work for sure. Come out in like that. Out in. You could stop always with your transition color. This is a lighter look for day wear. Y'all know me, I have always and will always love putting a dark color in the crease. That's just my, my style. So I usually will take the darkest color. This is uh, my, another favorite must-have eye um, shadow brush, and it's the E45. It's a tapered blending brush. And because it's tapered, you want to roll it because it's tapered. It's not flat. So you want to get all the edges. I even mushy back and forth a little and then tap off because you mushy in. And you always put down in the outer crease area right there because, look, that's where most of the product's going to deposit, and that's where you want it to. You can do it straight up and down, and then goes windshield wiper. And if you look up, it keeps the color right in the crease because your skin, when you look up, will grab it. And then I like to also kind of do this outer V, like V, like that, and blend out. I have a scar right there, so it doesn't take very well. Someone pointed that out to me that scar tissue about the reason that happens is one of you guys told me that is scar tissue doesn't take um, powders or creams or anything as well as your regular skin okay and tap that back off again put down right there you can make your little this back half of the V and then that part of the V and again you can look or you can just keep it nice and steady in the, the alley <laughs> the crease and then you can blend up just a little bit on the outer area. Nice, that's a really pretty color. It's like a brown purple, isn't it? Looks more brown than purple, but I like it. Then I like to go underneath the eye with the same dark color, and I always love, again, one of my absolute favorites, must have is an E20. That is a short shader, is what a lot of people call it, or a smudge brush. It's just a very, very dense, tight, short brush. You can wet it. Some people like to wet it. One of the things you can wet it with is the MAC Prep and Prime uh, Fix Plus, and you can do that. I can use my spit because I don't share my brushes, but you can do this. Oops, it was locked. <laughs> it has a locking top, I guess, so because you don't want it to... Why is this not working? Hold on a second. There it goes. Wow, so it hasn't been done in a while, I guess. There. This is also a good um, face spray for after you do your makeup, and we'll talk about face sprays, but um, not in this video. In the Makeup Marathon, we'll have one just for that. So I'm going back to this dark color. Tap off. And I just go right through the lashes. Not under them, through them. And what does that do? It fills in between the lashes so that you don't see the little um, white places. It's almost like lining. And it's a great way to line if you don't like a lot of liner. Also, I take whatever's left over and run the bottom part of the brow. Draws all the color together. This does have a bit of purple in it, so be careful. Or you're going to look like you have purple eyebrows. And then I kind of rush it through the front. Just reinforces the brow without using a pencil type brow. Now I'm going to save the other one because we do have some brow products. So I'm going to save a brow. <laughs> and they will end up looking different. But I just want to show you the difference. Again, running through the lashes. Usually do one or two swoops. Then I kind of stamp it on the upper lashes. Again, what you're trying to do is just get in between those lashes very tempted to, to hold that. but Alright, so that is a really great palette I love. As far as palettes for the eye and the face go, there's only one face palette that I absolutely adore and highly recommend. It's very hard to get, I think, now. And that is, again, the perfect packaging of Charlotte Tilbury. And this one, I hate the names that are all sex-oriented. It makes me so angry that the, the beauty industry thinks the only reason you want to be attractive is to be have sex. And it's like, no, I just like to look attractive. How about that? It's a good reason. But anyway, so makeup doesn't have to have all sex names. But this one is Seductive Beauty. Anyway. Um, I feel like it's unempowering to women, to be honest. I will say that to all product makers, manufacturers, brands that 
women should not think that their only value is in their sensuality and their sexuality. Uh, obviously, if you put makeup on, you would like to look better. You would like to enhance the beauty you have, whether you go heavy or light. But it shouldn't mean that, that, that you have to be sexy to be attractive. Uh, I think there is a lot of attractiveness to having a modest look. So um, I hate these names that imply that's all we should be about is sex. And what does that do to get us in trouble? So makes me angry at the industry, but I'm not going to go there for right now. <laughs> but anyway, I love these colors. I love that it's got a highlighter, a decent uh, bronzer that is not so orangey. The blush is a little peachy. I wish it was a little more pink. But I love the champagne highlighter. I love the kind of silvery brown transition color. And I love this kind of chocolatey taupe um, dark color. The, the only other one that comes close to this is Flower Beauty. It is the exact same um, packaging format. I don't think I would compare them as far as quality. I do have to say it's good. It's, Flower Beauty is good. But I have to say Charlotte Tilbury does put a lot of money in research and uh, ingredients. And certainly packaging. So you're going to pay a lot more for her. But I do like her. I also like her, um, what are they called? Um, Power Chrome Eye Pencils. And this one's called Life's Luxury. And I really love this one. It is a true chocolate taupe. And it has a little bit of sparkle to it. And I love using this. You can even use it on the front and right over what you just did. And it's just a reinforcer. of uh, Almost like a liner underneath. Um, the lashes a little bit and you can put it on the top if you're not going to use liner or you can make this your liner this is definitely a liner product as well as you could go ahead and, and blend this out over the lid and it, it makes a beautiful eyeshadow color so I really just love this so this is a great product I don't like that it has to be that it's not a scroll up it has to um, have a um, 